In an Imperial kiln, master craftsman Fung and his team are getting ready for a firing. An ingenious firebox is constructed as part of the brick door that is built to seal the kiln. The design creates a tremendous air draft that raises the temperature. The heat of the fire is drawn from the front through the kiln. The smaller porcelain items can't take the highest temperatures, so they're put in the rear. The kiln must be kept at 1150 degrees centigrade for 24 hours, some feet without a thermometer. I spit into the kiln to check temperature changes. When the porcelain is fired, the kiln will make a light hissing sound. Massive walls provide insulation to retain heat. This, combined with airflow, were crucial steps towards the world's first iron and steel revolution. But it needed one last breakthrough to push the temperature up that last hundred degrees to create liquid iron for casting on a massive scale. And this was the key, forced air. As any traveler knows, high temperature for cooking is used like this right across China. As early as 400 BC, a pump was invented in China that provided continuous forced air. Unlike the European bellows, airflow is virtually constant, and that made all the difference. Even a small hand-driven fan can liquefy aluminium scrap. Cheap pots are made like this in many country towns. The jigsaw was complete, the iron flowed, and revolution was in the air. ruthless man used the iron and steel to create an empire. Qin Shu Huan ranks with empire builders such as Alexander the Great. He united China and became its first emperor in 221 BC. The terracotta warriors that still guard his tomb near modern-day Xi'an symbolize his military strengths. But the greatest achievement of Qin Shi Huang was to exploit iron and steel to create the foundations of his empire. <laughs> 